the truth. Jesus, you are the truth. You spoke the words of life. Jesus, you are the love. You're the one who gave his life. You were God in the sky. Hey. 
stand a chance when I'm standing in your of my fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing in your of my fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing in your love. Doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing in your love. every chain There's power that can empty out a grave There's resurrection power that can save There's power in your name Power in your name There's power You are, you are. 
are just what God has really been doing in my life. Um, so basically, I'll try to make this short, but um, so most of you know I had like troubles with, some of you know that I had troubles with school, um, with certain courses, specifically maths, um, and <laughs> with the course that I'm doing, math is like compulsory, so if you don't pass it, basically you're, you're not going to move on to the next years and stuff. But you know, first year came, I wasn't able to pass it, but COVID, so I got an extension. Um, second year came, my mom passed, I got an extension. Third year, I was really hoping to pass. <laughs> um, and bear in mind, the course is for three years, so I was really hoping to pass, but you know, God had other plans, so I didn't pass. Um, um, and I knew, I knew what was coming like at the end of the um, academic year for me. I knew it was going to come. Um, basically, what it is is the binding study advice. I don't know if many of you know it, but for those of you who don't know it, it's basically you need to get a certain amount of credits to move on to your next year. If you don't get it, um, you get a negative binding study advice, and that means you can't continue your studies here. So I knew I was going to get that at the end of the academic year. So I was. But I was, you know, hoping for a miracle. Something, 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 you know, like something has to happen. But um, something didn't happen, and I got a negative binding study advice. And I remember, I was, I was hopeful because you have a hearing, and then they give you the the decision after the hearing. I was hopeful, but I knew it. I knew that they wouldn't even let me continue because I mean, why would you, you know? But um, I texted Tandy. And I told her, I was like, I just go to Tandy with all my problems, but I texted Tandy and I told her, I was like, Tandy, like, this is it. You're probably not going to see me again. Like, um, um, I'm going, I'm leaving. I'm not staying in Maastricht anymore. I'm going back home, um, get my life together and then know what I'm going to do after. And Tandy was like, what are you saying? <laughs> and then I was like, okay, you know what? I'll call you and explain everything later. But, and then I, she calls, I tell her everything. Basically, I have a hearing the next day, da da da. And Tandy's like, just tell me the results after the hearing. I'm like, okay, no problem. Hearing comes, everything happens, and decision is in like the next minute. You don't have a postponement, so you gotta quit, you gotta go back, you gotta do whatever. And I had until November to do that. And I just texted Tandy, sis, and I feel like she already knew what was happening. So she gave me a call and she was like, before I could even say, oh, hi, da, da, da. At that point, I was crying. I was literally weeping, guys. And before I could even say, oh, hi, she was like, you're appealing. That's it. You're appealing. No, no, not, don't say anything. You're appealing. Just know you're appealing. Now tell me what you want to say. And I was like, Tandy, I told you, I'm not, I don't have the strength to appeal. I don't. I don't want to appeal. Like I'm just done with Maastricht. Honestly, I've never even felt happy since the day I got here because this was not my dream city. But <laughs> no, because I was meant to move to Canada, but I found myself here. But um, I told her, I was like, listen, it's over for me. Let me just go back and regroup, and then you know if I'm gonna stay in Ghana, or if I'm gonna go back home, um, to Canada, or if I'm gonna do something, go to France, something. And she's like, no, no, listen, if you don't appeal, I'm going to appeal for you. And, and I'm like, okay, fine, I will appeal. And then she just adds Hillman to the call. And um, Hillman just opens his mouth. So I believe Tandy already briefed him on what was happening. So Hillman is like, no, no, you're appealing. Like, you're not going down without a fight. And I'm like, guys, I really, really don't have the strength to appeal. And they're like, you're appealing. I'm like, okay. I mean, since I don't have any other choice, right, I will appeal. So um, we talk about like the whole appealing process because you can appeal to get a postponement. So we talk about the whole appealing process. We do everything. And I just told them that, guys, I don't think I'm going to be able to face my dad and tell him um, that this is what is happening right now. And they're like, we get you but you have to tell them. And I was like, no, 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 you guys don't understand. Like back home, if you, if something like that happens, your parents gonna kill you, excuse my language, but they're gonna kill you. And I was so scared. And 
I was like, okay, fine, I'm gonna tell him. I called my aunt, like, cause she knows she knows how to talk to my dad to like calm him down and stuff like that. I call her and she's like, no, you have to tell him. And I'm like, I, I thought you would say something else, you know? Maybe you will tell them for me. So I text Danny, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. So I call my dad and you know, he's just he's just he didn't say a thing. Like after I told him, he was just looking at me in the face. He didn't say a thing. And he was like, I'm just coming back from a wedding, I'll call you later. And I was like, dang, okay. Like now, is he okay with it? Is he not okay with it? At that point, I'm just crying and just praying at the same time. I was just crying, praying, crying, praying the whole night. And then I was talking to Sarah and Sarah was like, no, no, just calm down. He's your dad, he understands. He probably had setbacks as well. And I was like, no, you don't understand. My dad did not have any setbacks. Like. He just went bam, bam, bam. Received valedictorian and stuff when he was in uni. I'm like, okay. Then she's like, okay, Nana, you know what? Just let God do his thing. I said, okay. Then um, my dad calls later in the evening and he's like, yeah, so what were you saying before? I tell him everything and he's like, okay. I was like, uh, okay, okay, like, okay. And then he's like, so what's your next step? I tell him what the next steps were, and he's like, so what if they don't accept the appeal? That's the first thing that came into his head. And he, I was like, they are gonna accept the appeal. Bear in mind, I wasn't, I wasn't sure they were gonna do it because you know, you can never know the chances of Masters University. But um, I told I told them, like, they're gonna accept it. And God is on my side. And my dad's like, don't even bring God into this. Don't bring God into this. Where was he when you were having troubles? Did I'm like, listen, God was there when I was having troubles. You have no idea. Because if if I was like the old me before like being, knowing most of people here, the first thing I would have done was maybe just, because I can't swim, so I'm just going to jump into the, the, you know, the bridge, the water there, and just, you know, just end up down dying over there. But, you know, now I'm here. <laughs> Yeah, they they may not even if they don't accept the appeal, it's not the end of the world. I'm just you know 21. I can still go to school, do whatever, do whatever, figure out my life. Even if I don't go to school, there are some you know billionaires that didn't go to school and they're billionaires. <laughs> and then he's just he's just looking at me like this girl must not be serious. And I I just told him, okay, you know what, calm down. I have the appeal on this day, but in the meantime, I spoke to a study advisor, they said to switch courses, da da da, and he was like, okay, he ends the call, literally, he ends, normally I end the call on him, but he ends the call this time, and I was like, okay, he's pissed, but I understand why he's pissed, because, you know, we don't pay the European people fees, we pay the international fees, and I understand, and he texts me, and he's like, I wish I could, my phone is not here, but he texted me and he said something about, um, I'm glad this has happened to you. Now you know how life can be. It's not always on the rosy side. Sometimes you have setbacks to wake up, uh, to let you wake up or something like that. And I was like, dang, okay. And then he's like, all is well that ends well. And my dad is a lawyer. So when he uses phrases like that, like it probably doesn't even mean what it's supposed to mean. So then I'm like, what is this man talking about? But okay, I mean, he's okay with it. And then he calls me after and he's like, if they give you to study European studies, take it. Just take it and I'll pay the fees and do your best there. I'm like, wait, ha, God, ha. wait, let him say that again, please, because I am not hearing it. And then he says, yeah, I told him like, can you repeat what you said? Cause like, you know, the line was breaking. It wasn't. And and he's like, okay, da da da. He repeats it, and I'm like, good, okay, no problem. So fast forward, um, I think we were, we were braiding Rita's hair that day, and I was supposed to talk to Precious, and because Precious, um, bear in mind, Rita also knows about this. Um, a couple of people do, um, and then I spoke to Precious about it because you know Precious is good in writing, so we had to like try to you know make all these huge grammatic word, grammatical words and stuff and then write it in the appeal so they know that yes i can speak english and they're gonna accept that appeal whether they like it or not so i spoke to precious she did her thing and on the day of the appeal um the day i was supposed to send the appeal i'm like guys I'm, i was shaking like i was shaking i couldn't even control it and sarah's like nana 
just calm down like calm down right now you're letting fear take over you just calm down i was having like a panic attack guys it wasn't even like i've never had that in my life because i'm not the kind of person to panic in such uh, situations but that day i just when it was time i called rita hillman um i can't remember who was it who else was there precious tandy lydia i can't remember they were all there and then we all prayed and i sent it and as soon as i sent it the next day or two i think i got an email that oh you have a hearing again i was like okay so i i went into the hearing you know just just trying to not think of the worst possible outcomes but i went into that hearing and i said you know god and see god i know international business is for me and i know you are going to do this thing i don't care but God, you said we should tell you what exactly we want. And I'm going to tell you that now. If you do anything else, I'm done with you. Because <laughs> I was done at that point. Um, but, <laughs> but, yeah, that's what I literally said. So I went into that hearing and <laughs> and, I, and I was like, okay. I told the, the dude whatever it is. And he's just asking me, like, if we were to give you another chance, how would you make it different? I say all of that. And he's like, okay, Nana. And bear in mind, I had some mental health issues, so I used that as like, you know, um, as my, uh, what's it called? You know what I mean? Um, so I went, so after the hearing, I called Tadi and Hillman, and I'm like, guys, I just had the hearing. It felt positive, it felt good. So I know there's a positive outcome because the first hearing, I just knew they weren't even trying to hear me out. So I told them and they were like, okay, let's keep hoping. I was in class that day because i had it in the morning and then in the afternoon i had class i was in european studies and bear in mind after my first european studies if priscilla was here she could testify because i was with her i told her i was like listen european studies is not for me like god is not for me please i cannot do this the exams are coming i cannot do this and basically after the the hearing in class and then i get an email from the appeal team and they're like Oh, your appeal has been accepted. Um, just, just, uh, what's it called? Just take back your application for your appeal studies, and you start on Monday. This is a Friday, and you start on Monday, and I'm like, <laughs> I was in class, and I just opened my mouth. I was like, and the tutor's looking at me like, okay, is she okay? <laughs> and then I just wanted to scream like, oh my God, thank you, Jesus, because I could. I, like, I didn't really think it was going to work because my friends that also had the same thing, they appealed and it didn't go through for them. So then I was like, oh my God, wait, God, please, please, this is not a joke. Like, And then I asked the, the person sitting next to me to refresh my email and like, and I was pinching myself and it's like, no, you've been accepted. Uh, your appeal has been accepted. You can just go ahead and all of that. And I was like, oh God, please, let's go for a celebration because wow. And I just wanted to share that story because I was at the lowest point of my life and that happened to me. And there's this one song I found I found out I was like so late. <laughs> and when I told everything <laughs> and he went about it, they were like, no, no, that song has been there for ages. And I'm like, yeah, but I just found it. As most of you know, Jaira. Yeah. And I found it <laughs> I found it when I was studying for an exam and I literally just jumped to them and I was like, guys found the song and i think this is my breakthrough song and then they're all like uh, that song has been there for ages you know and that song literally got me through everything and then whilst i was waiting on the appeal to be accepted another one was wait on the lord that was my everyday song so guys i just want to tell you that even if things are not going your way even if you're at the last point in your the lowest the the dead point in your life don't give up please don't give up like do not giving up is not an option like don't give up because god does things he may not do it the way we want to but he does things and he's moving in our lives so thank you i'm glad you're staying in last <laughs> um though not everyone who comes to this church gets to stay here and so uh today we're getting to say goodbye to another person who's been a part of our church for some years and has been a valuable family member 
Um, but Annika, if you'd come forward and uh, share a little bit, and then we'll take the time to get to pray for you. Hello, church. My name is Annika, for the people who don't know me. Um, I was here for four years, and uh, I left, uh, but I, I, I come from the Netherlands, <laughs> and I God sent me back to the Netherlands. So I'm living in Sittard. And uh, I get it on my heart to go back to be in a church in, in, in the Netherlands. So I'm going back. It was a, again a step to take. It's not easy. <laughs> but I think uh, when God wants it, it's okay. And then I trust God to do it. So I say goodbye. <laughs> but I also have uh, Pastor Matthew asked me to share a testimony for myself. I was on the uh, Bible study group a few weeks ago, and I told at the end, "Hey guys, I have heard you," <laughs> because I'm already older. You see. <laughs> And I was, because of my age, I was wearing ear, how do you call it? Hearing aid. Yeah, hearing. hearing. And it was, I was saying it's of my age, but it is of my age maybe. <laughs> but I was also going to uh, a uh, healing uh, service. Uh, but, uh, you put it on the mail, and I was thinking, wow, who's coming to the south of the Netherlands? Because the Netherlands, it, it's a nice country, but also a strange country. <laughs> Nobody is coming to the south. All what happened, what is from God, it happened in the north of the Netherlands, in the middle, in the west, in the east, but not in the south, I can tell you. <laughs> so I was really thinking, wow, who is coming to the south? <laughs> so I want to, to see that, I want to hear that. And I did not know the man, and um, then he was asking for, who is uh, bad hearing? <coughs> so I was thinking, okay, I know God can do it. I, know, I trust God for that. So I was saying, okay, I'm doing that. I put my fingers in my ear. Then he asked, uh, when there is something, you have put, when you have something in your ears, put it out and look if you uh, fully change. So I take them off of my ears, and I say, wow, there is sound coming in. So it, it was a change. I cannot tell exactly how, but it was a change. So I was feeling really happy, and I was really happy that I was hearing the, the Bible study, because I always have to, <laughs> to do uh, effort to hear everything, but it was coming. But then I also realized, okay, it takes uh, a step to stand in faith. And that is what I have to do. And I have also learned in the past, when you start to face, you start on level one, and you're growing to level six. So I got that in my mind. I, and I think I have to do that. To, I'm telling you now this, I want to do more, I have to realize that I have to step in faith and to grow in that faith. To grow that God is doing a miracle, God is doing things. And what? I don't know. But for this point, I trust God. I was, I'm not wearing them, I did not put them in. Sometimes I'm saying, what are you saying? Sometimes to people. So I say, oh, it is not 100%. But I stand in faith, it will become 100%. So, take steps. Know that um, when you have something, you start on level one, but you are growing to a big level. I don't know how, that's why I, I start on level one. You can go to 10, you can go to 20. It's, uh, it's okay, it's for everybody. His own, his own face, and I think that is important. Nobody can have face for you, you can only have it for yourself. Mm -hmm. 
So I wanted to say bye, goodbye, saying goodbye. I hope I see you. I'm not leaving the Netherlands, so I'm still staying. <laughs> Always appreciated that Annika is an example of someone who believes you can keep growing in faith. You're not done. You're not at the end. And we know that the step you're taking to to really focus on being a part of the Dutch Christian community in Sittard and, and helping that grow will be something that God's going to do stuff in you and use you to do things in other people's lives. So, but yes, I'm glad Sittard is not so so far away that we can definitely still see each other. Um, we wanted to take some time to pray. If, if people want to come up and gather around her that, that know her and care about her, you're certainly welcome to. And then I'm going to ask Judith to close it for us. Yes, Lord Jesus, I want to say amen to all the prayers that have already been prayed. Thank you so much for the life of Annika. Thank you for such a, an impact and an example she is for all of us. In yeah, fun times, we have shared so many laughter, so many serious conversation, but also we have served, shared together so many tears. I thank you for the time that yeah, we as a church have learned and have shared with Annika together. And I thank you also for this new season in her life. And Father, I thank you because um, through Annika we, we can learn many things, uh, how she loves you, how she wants to be involved all the time. And, um, yeah, the kids' ministry with the prayers indeed, and also so many things, uh, many picnics together, um, Bible studies, and I just want to thank you for her. Going to Sitar is now an act of obedience, not only hearing you, but she is obeying you now. And Father, in that obedience, we want to bless her as a church. We bless her out, we send her out, and thank you, Lord, for the things that she is already learning and she learned through the past years in Damascus Road and I, I pray that she takes it and she brings it and I pray also for the transition going back into the Dutch church might be not easy there may be certain things that she needs to adapt uh, to I pray Lord that you are with her also as you are the one telling her to move you're the one that holding her hands and walking with her together I thank you for that one gemeente, one church that you already pre prepare her um, to, to join with, with them in Sittard. And I just want to bless her, Lord. Thank you, Lord, uh, that she may be a blessing for others, be an example in how she loves you, how she obeys you. Um, I thank you so much, Lord. So as a church, as Damascus wrote, we send her out, we bless her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, church. It's, it's such a pleasure to be here and to see everybody's face. I will be doing, I am Rita, by the way, for those who do not know, and I'll be doing the announcements and offering and reading the Bible. Okay, so um, for the offering, I'll start with the offering. Yeah. So for the offering, uh, you can give in the basket behind at the greeter's table, or you can give uh, the QR code over there and I will pray for their offering really quickly then I'll give you the announcements. Dear God we thank you so much that you are a God you are Jaira, you are the God who provides for us. We thank you God that in every every situation, every circumstance, everything God that you are working everything out for our good and yeah we just want to pray for the offering that yeah that you will use it for your yeah for your will and that your name will be glorified in all the different ways it will be used. And yeah, we just pray also for wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so um, the announcements. Today we have a potluck. Is everybody excited? I hope you all brought your food and brought some food to share with each other. And uh, we will, you, if you're new to the church, you're able to meet our leadership and find out uh, the different opportunities of how you can be a part of the church. So stay and have some great food and meet us. And then tomorrow, we have our Monday morning online devotionals at 7. It's actually changed from 6 to 7. So, you know, you can make it. If you're not an early riser, you can make it. 
it's really a great time to just fellowship and start up your week really well. It was really nice this Monday. Um, Bible studies. It is not too late for you to be part of a Bible study. If you do not have a group yet, you can find Christine at the greeters table somewhere later. Or you can find one of the leaders, Pastor Matt, and they will direct you to where she is. Um, drum is this Wednesday at 7.30 at the St. Peter's Strat 6. So you should come and join us. We're talking about empowered. Yeah, that's the theme. Empowered. Last week was really empowering. So you want to be empowered again this Wednesday. You should come. Pastor Ron will be speaking. Um, okay, guys, listen. Break away. No, we need some more noise. Break away. All right. If you are part of drum, and if you're not, you might be able to join. But you guys, you, the sign-up link is open. Drum is happening on the weekend of the 4th to 6th of November. It is 75 euros. If you are not able to pay 75 euros, reach out to one of our leaders. We can find something to do. We always do some big sales and raise this money. But there is no reason for you to not be part of Breakaway. So you should sign up, and I hope to see you there. Um, Wholesome will have its first meeting of the new season on 22nd of October. So if you are single and ready to be empowered by Jesus, and you're single, yeah? Come to the Singles Ministry on 22nd of October. It happens at the same place as Drum happens. You can also talk to one of the leaders, Sonaili or Denaili. And if you want to give towards the church, you can do the offering part. And you can sign up for the weekly church email on bit.ly stroke BRIC News. You can find all the announcements for the church. And yeah, that's about it. So I will now do the Bible reading from Acts 4, 1 to 13. The priest and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, so the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. The next day, the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so was Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and other of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. But by what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account, to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how we are healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Blaise Birgila, for those of you who don't know me. And I serve as one of the pastors of the staff <laughs> here at Damascus Road. And this morning I'm going to share God's word with you. So, uh, probably most of you know, we have been going through a new teaching series called A Call to Action. And um, we are going to look at this uh, series for a few in the coming days or in the coming weeks. And the purpose for us is to go and practice everything that Jesus has been teaching us. Um, and two Sundays ago, Pastor Matt introduced this new teaching series and he clearly explained what type of action. Uh, is expecting from us. He said that the, there are two actions, if I can say. The first one is to demonstrate the kingdom of God, so to let people see what is the power of God, but also to speak about the kingdom of God. And uh, this morning, I want to share about um, one equipment we need to have before we can go and then start st talking about uh, the kingdom of God or demonstrating the power of, of God, and that is 
the boldness from the Holy Spirit. We really need boldness before we can go. And I love the fact that Jesus in Acts chapter 1, before he sent his disciples, he said, wait, wait because you need to receive the Holy Spirit before you can go. So today I want to want to quickly share about um, some acts of boldness we find in the book of Acts and how we can put that into practice. But first I want to read uh, verse 13 again that we read um, this morning in our Bible reading because it's really, uh, it's really powerful for me. Uh, and it says, I think you can put the slide, the next slide. Um, and it's, it said this, my version is, uh, I think it's NIV version. Yes, the next one. Yes, this. It says that the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they, they were ordinary men with no special teaching in the scripture. I love the fact that what made these people be amazed was not the fact that these people were Bible nerds, you know? It's not because they had the knowledge of the Bible that they were amazed, but they, 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 they saw the boldness that these people had because the end of the sentence says, they also recognized that these people have been with Jesus. Because of the boldness they saw in them, they say, no, these guys, we see Jesus in them. Because we recognize the same boldness that Jesus had. We recognize the same boldness to teach. We recognize the same boldness to pray for miracles. We recognize the same boldness to demonstrate the power of God. This is so amazing for me to realize that I need boldness from the Holy, the Holy Spirit. I want people, when they look at me, they see the boldness, and because of that boldness, they can say, oh, this guy must be Christian. This guy must, must walk with Jesus. It is the boldness from the Holy Spirit that will make the difference, not necessarily our knowledge of the Bible. And it is not wrong to know the Bible, of course, but sometimes we can think like knowing the Bible is enough to reach, to reach out to people, but we really need the boldness as we go to speak about Jesus, as we go to demonstrate the kingdom of God. But uh, let me first try to define what boldness. I was trying to find on the internet what, what boldness means. And I found those three definitions that I found really interesting. Uh, the first one says that boldness is the lack of hesitation or fear in the face of risk or danger. So it's courage, actually. And the second one says that boldness is the ref uh, refusal to be held back at what uh, people are saying by the opinions of others and and the last one is is the lack of a regard um, for the rules so sometimes you 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 disregard the rules of a country because you want to be bold and you want to uh, continue to do what god is asking you to do even if the rule of the country says that you cannot do this so i found those uh, definitions really interesting but i was thinking this seems more like selfish you know because you can be bold and trying to overcome your own, your own, uh, let's say your own danger. Uh, you can, like during Corona, there, there, have, there have been a lot of challenges. I don't know if you have noticed that during Corona, there were a lot of challenges on social media. And all those challenges had the purpose to help you overcome your fear, help you uh, go over your limit. But it's kind of selfish because you are using boldness for your own purpose. But the boldness that comes from the Holy Spirit, it is the ability for us to demonstrate the kingdom of God. And whether we are sometimes have to be pushed uh, to our limits, or we have to brave the risk, or sometimes we have to disregard people's opinion, we will do that. But the main purpose is not for us. It is to speak about the kingdom of God and to demonstrate the kingdom of God. So when we are talking about the boldness of the Holy Spirit, it is really this ability for us to be Jesus in the world. So if, even if it means that it's going to send you to places you don't want to go, you will overcome, you will do that, and you will take the risk. Why? Because you want to show Jesus to, to the world. So boldness from the Holy Spirit is really this ability for us to, uh, to be witness of Jesus. Now let me uh, look at a few examples in the book of Acts of the different types of acts of boldness and see how we can apply this in our own lives. So I'm going to start with uh, Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 2, we see it's the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit descends on the disciples 
in the upper room and they are filled with what seems to be tongues of fire. And then you have this group of Jews who are amazed of seeing what is happening. These people are speaking in their own tongues. And they are amazed. But then you have another group of people mocking them. Another group of people who are having fun of them, thinking, oh, these Christians are crazy. They have been drinking a lot. <coughs> and then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, with boldness, he stands up and is defending the Christians. He's defending them, saying, wait a minute, these people are not drunk. And by the way, it's only nine in the morning. And I think sometimes we need boldness from the Holy Spirit to also be able to defend other Christians. Because we live in, in places where you will find people who criticize Christians, who insult them. Sometimes they think Christians are crazy. You know? And we need the boldness from the Holy Spirit to be, to be able to say, wait a minute, Christians are not crazy. We can also think, we also have common sense. And sometimes I think that we, we are quiet in areas where people are mocking Christians. Because you think, oh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna say something here because I don't wanna get into trouble. And I think that the Holy Spirit sometimes will fill you with boldness for you to stand up and defend your brothers and sisters because this is also part of the kingdom of God. And I love the fact that Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit and he stood up and he said, wait a minute, guys, these people are not drunk. They are just filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he preached the gospel. He said, what you are seeing right now is what was written in the book of Joel, that in the last days I will pour out my, my spirit on every flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will have vision. Your old men will see dreams. And, and it's going to be the day of the, the coming of the Lord. And by the way, that Lord is Jesus that you have crucified. But today, God has raised uh, from the dead. And God made that man Messiah and King. I love the fact that he was bold enough to, in front of people to share the gospel. First, he defended Christians, but then he shared the gospel. And the question for us is, what do you do when Christians around you are being insulted? How do you react? Do you say, oh, I'm going to pray for them and uh, maybe one day God will defend them? Or do you also say, Holy Spirit, fill me with boldness so that I can also defend my brothers and sisters? How do you react at your workplace when people are insulting your brothers and sisters? How do you react in your own family, at, at your studies, when people are talking bad against are your brothers and sisters? Do you also stand up with the boldness from the Holy Spirit to defend them or not? So that was Acts chapter 2. And then we come to Acts chapter 3. In Acts chapter 3, we see um, in Acts chapter 3, we see Peter and John are going to the temple at the time of prayer. And when they arrive at the temple, they see a lame who was there at the gate. And what we, we, we learn from the story is that that man was brought, I think, usually there so that he could beg for money. And I don't know how many times Peter and John passed by this guy. But what I know is that that day, specifically, Peter and John stopped. And they looked straight at this guy. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit, with boldness, to look at him and say, guys, look at us. And the man thought that he, he, uh, they would give him money. But then Peter, and, uh, Peter said, silver and gold we do not have. But what we have, we give to you. And then they said, in Jesus' name, stand up and walk. And I think we really need boldness to do this kind of act. Because we live in a society where we do not dare to practice our faith sometimes. And I love the fact that Peter and John did not say, okay, my friend, stay here. We are going to the church. We are going to pray for you. And then we will come back. Sometimes we, we like to pray for people. And we say, uh, I will pray for you and God will heal, heal you. And sometimes it's easy to hide behind those types of prayers. But God is asking us to actually step out in boldness and to pray. And to say, in Jesus' name, stand up and walk. And this really requires, of course, a personal relationship with God and also boldness that comes from the Holy Spirit. But Peter and John, filled with the boldness from the Holy Spirit, they could look at this guy and say, stand up and walk. And then when people saw the miracle that happened, they tried to give them the credit. You know, they tried to applaud them. They tried to kind of worship Peter and John. And again, P 
Peter, with all the boldness from the Holy Spirit, could look at the people and say, what are you doing? What are you doing? You think it's because of us? You think it's because we sing well and, you know, sometimes you sing well and people fall in the spirit and we, we applaud the worshippers, right? We applaud the musicians. We applaud the preachers. We applaud uh, men, ordinary men that God is using. But sometimes we need also boldness from the Holy Spirit to stand up and say, guys, it's not us. It's God. So stop taking us as God because we are just vessels. And I love the boldness from the Holy Spirit that Peter had to also tell the people, listen, this is only God and we are only vessels. So the question is, how do you react when you pass by the lame? You know, we, we see many, many we, we all pass by lanes when we walk, when we go to our workplace, when we go to the schools. We, sometimes we, we, we give them the look where we think, oh, he's there again. He's going to ask me money again. But, but I think we also need boldness from the Holy Spirit from time to time to stop and say, silver and, and gold I do not have. But what I have, I give it to you. Because we believe that there is authority in Jesus' name. And God is calling us actually to step out in boldness and to practice that authority in Jesus' name. Then uh, we come to Acts chapter 4. In Acts chapter 4, and in Acts chapter 3, there is this great miracle. Everybody is happy. But then in Acts chapter 4, Peter and John got arrested because of the miracle. And then they are brought into this big council of, of people. And I love what uh, the, the text says. It says that Annas uh, was there, that John Alexander was there, that uh, Caiaphas was there, and all those high priest family people were, were there. And I can imagine how we can be intimidated when you are brought into big names of the, the uh, particular country. Can you imagine if they arrest you and they take you in front of the prime minister, in front of, I don't know, the governor of Maastricht, or even in front of the king, and they ask you the question, by what authority have you been doing this miracle? I don't know how you would have reacted. I think maybe some of you would have been intimidated to say, well, actually, I didn't do anything. I was just going to the temple, and then <laughs> this man was there, and then I don't know what happened. He was healed. Sometimes we, when we are in front of people who are really intimidated us, how do we react? But once again, I love the fact that Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, with boldness, he could look at this guy and say, you want to know by what name we are doing this? We are doing this by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. By the way, the guy that you have crucified, the guy that you have killed, but God the Father has raised him from the dead and made him king and messiah. And, and, and the stone that you have rejected, but now is the cornerstone. And know this, there is no one else who can save. There is salvation is in, in no one else but in Jesus. Wow, this is really, this really requires boldness. And, 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 and I know we, sometimes we are uh, in, in places where we feel intimidation from other people. Intimidation to even speak about our faith. Intimidation to share about the fact that you are Christian. But when we, we receive the boldness from the Holy Spirit, it really allow us to overcome our fear. It will allow us to disregard people's opinion. And I love the fact that Peter and John did that. And what happened? We have read that these members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and they realized, no, these guys have been with Jesus. Because we see the same boldness that Jesus had. We recognize Jesus. Jesus was uh, ready to be killed. He was ready to be accused. He was not afraid of anyone. And we see the same boldness in these people. Certainly, these people have been with Jesus. And I can imagine, imagine if all of us here, wherever God is sending us, we, have the, we show the same boldness. How many people will say, Oh, I recognize these guys. I think they are going to this church in Damascus Road in Maastricht. Because we, we, we see the same pattern. We see that they are putting into practice what they have learned. We see that they are not afraid of being accused. They are not afraid of being insulted. They are not afraid of being, um, I don't know, persecuted. We see this boldness because it comes only from the Holy Spirit. And then when Peter and John... Um, 
before they released Peter and John, they asked them to not speak about the name of Jesus again. So that was the, the, the rule that they gave them. Don't speak about the name of Jesus. But Peter said, you know what? Judge for yourself what is good. To obey God or to obey man. And I think sometimes we need also boldness from the Holy Spirit whenever there are rules out in the country preventing us from demonstrating the kingdom of God and speaking about the kingdom of God to say, listen, we are trying to be good citizens, but judge for yourself. Because we will not let, we will not keep our faith and not practice it. Yes, we're going to be good citizens, but sometimes we have to say like Peter, we're going to obey God. We cannot stop from talking about Jesus. And when they, they went back to the other disciples, you know what they did? They prayed together. And guess what they asked? God, give us great boldness to speak about, about Jesus. So the question for us is, what, how do we react when we are persecuted? How do we react when we are intimidated? Do we still boldly stand in our faith and say, this is our faith and this is what we believe in? Then we come to Acts chapter 5, and in Acts chapter 5, I also love this story, uh, because the end of Acts chapter 4, we see that the church is growing together, the church is, is sharing everything that they have, you know, they make sure that the poor also have enough to eat, and, and those who had lands, they, they were selling the lands to make sure that everybody is, is having something, and, and then in the beginning of Acts chapter 5, we see... Uh, a couple, Ananias and Sapphira, were part of the church. These are Christians, part of the church. They sold the land, but they kept part of the money. And, and, and then they, they thought they could lie to the Holy Spirit. And I love the fact that Peter could really boldly confront them and say, What are you doing? How can you think that you can lie to the Holy Spirit? And I think that sometimes, even as Christians, we need boldness to confront one another with love, of course. But whenever we see a brother or sister who's been Christian for many years and who's not living a life that is really pleasing God or a life that is fearing God, sometimes it's good to step out in boldness and say, my brother, what you, what you are doing right now is not honoring God. And ho hopefully, one day I hope that when you see me, you see me, you look at me, and you, 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 you see the way I, for example, treat my wife, I really hope that you will step up in boldness and say, bless, this is not the way we, sh we should love Jesus. And this requires boldness, right? Because you don't know how the other person is going to react. But I love the fact that Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit to confront Ananias and, and, and his wife, Sapphira, to, to say, what are you thinking? You really think that you can, you can lie to the Holy Spirit? You really think that uh, this spirit is just a normal spirit? You really think that you can lie to God? And I think we need boldness to, to, to confront one another and say, listen, we need to, to fear God. We need to respect God. We need to love God, not only with, with our words, but also with our lives. And yes, when God is asking us to, to, uh, to love our, our, our neighbors, we have to practice that. And when God is asking us to flee away from, from, from sexual immorality, we have to do that. And if, as a Christian who come to church, year after year, you are not obeying that. I think it's nice sometimes to stand up in boldness and say, brother, I think that you should maybe take some time and really ask forgiveness to God, because this is not pleasing God. In my former church in Liège, uh, one day we had a, a guitar player who came to church, and that guy was a great guitar player, at least one of the greatest guitar players I, I had seen. And then he wanted to join the worship team so my pastor said, okay, you can join, but we want to see you coming to church for a while, and then we're going to let you, you know, attend the practice and so on. So he accepted, and he, I think in his mind, he thought it would only uh, last one week or two weeks. But it took one month, and after that, he was really mad. So he went to my pastor and he said, who do you think that you are? Don't you know that I played with this? gospel singer, I play with this singer, I play with this choir, I've done this, 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 and that, and you leave me here, and I have to wait until you decide that I can join. And then my pastor was bold enough to say, listen, we are here because we love Jesus. That's the first thing we do. 
We are not here because we are running after position. We are not here because we, we, we want to make sure that we attract people who have been, who have, who have, uh, been playing with this uh, singer, who have all those you know, trophies. We are here because we love Jesus. And if for you waiting is difficult, you don't want to do that, then we welcome you as, a bro as our brother. We can continue to come to church, but we will, I will not let you join the worship team. And yes, in the beginning, in our worship team, we're only three people, no guitar, but I can tell you, it was three people filled with the Holy Spirit, with the heart and desire to love Jesus. And sometimes I think we need to confront people and say, listen, even if we only have to sing the two of us, we will do it. Because we want to practice what Jesus is asking us to practice. We want to honor God. And we need the boldness from the Holy Spirit sometimes to confront one another. So I really hope that as we grow together as a family, we will also have this, um, this ability to confront one another with love, of course. But I really hope that you will be able to build me as a man, as a husband, as a brother. And you will sometimes come to me and say, Blaise, listen, I think the way you are, you are acting right now is not pleasing God. Because this is auto part, also part of demonstrating the kingdom of God. So this is Acts chapter 5, and there are so many examples we can continue on. In Acts chapter 7, um, there is a man called Stephen. Uh, you know the, the story. Stephen is a man filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, he was falsely accused of blas blaspheme. He was brought in front of people, and he knew his life could, was in danger. He could be killed. But still, he was bold enough to answer. He was bold enough to preach. He was bold enough to speak about Jesus. And yes, some people say he talked too much. That's why he was, well, he ended up being stoned. But anyways, he, he was bold enough to share about his faith. And yes, he was. He, he, he died. He was stoned to death. But sometimes we we need boldness from the Holy Spirit, even in front of danger, to still say yes, I believe in Jesus. And if it means that I have to be, I don't know, stoned or killed, then yes, I accept to do that because I will not refuse to, uh, to, to, to deny my faith. And there are other examples. In Acts chapter 8, we see an, another man named Simon, a sorcerer, who, who saw Peter and John laying hands on people, you know, praying for them to receive the Holy Spirit. And he thought, oh yeah, I can just put some money in the envelope, bring it to Pastor Matt so that he can give me the gift of the Holy Spirit as well. And sometimes we, inside the church, there are people who think that they can buy the gift of the Holy Spirit. They think they can buy miracles. They can buy prophecies. They can buy visions. And, and I love the fact that Peter was bold enough to look at, at, at this guy and say, may you perish with your money because you think you can buy the gift from the Holy Spirit. You have no share in this ministry. Repent right now. And maybe, maybe, maybe God will forgive you. And sometimes you also need to tell some people who think that when we come to church, we, we try to buy the gift of the Holy Spirit, say, no, no, this is not part of what we are doing. No, Peter said, your heart is not right with God. And again, it requires boldness from the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 9, uh, there are so many examples, I'm going to give this last one. Acts chapter 9, we see a freshly uh, converted blasphemer called Saul. This guy was going to Damascus with the purpose to arrest Christians, to kill them maybe. But then he was, he had an encounter with Jesus, he had an illumination, he was transformed and then received a new definition. And now he's going to Damascus boldly to speak about Jesus. Then he went to Jerusalem. Again, boldly he starts speaking about Jesus. Wow, this is amazing to see how the Holy Spirit can change people, fill them with boldness and then send them out. And then we see uh, 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 Peter, who is in, in, in a city called Joppa. He arrives there, he sees a lame, a paralyzed was there. Again, what does he do? He says, man, in Jesus' name, stand up and walk. And the guy just stands up and walks. And I think there again, you, it requires really boldness to do that. And then there was a, a, a woman who was, her name was Dorcas or Tabitha. She was living in a city close to, to where Peter was. When they brought Peter there to pray for her, Peter came with the boldness from the Holy Spirit to pray for a dead woman. And I don't know if they ask you today, they call you, hey, there is this person who's dead, can you come and pray? 
I don't know how many of us will boldly say, okay, I'm coming to pray for, for, for that person. It is intimidated, right? Sometimes we think, what if I pray for that dead person and he remains dead? But I was listening to a, a pastor and, and he said, one day uh, a member of his church came to him and said, what if I, I pray for a dead person and the person remains dead? And he said, are you the one who killed the person in the first place? <laughs> no. So why are you afraid? I think sometimes we are afraid of the result. What if I pray and it doesn't happen? What if I pray for someone who is sick and the person remains sick? But we are not the ones to control the result. It's God who's doing the result. He's only asking us to step out in boldness and do the things. And for the rest, God is going to do it. So why are we afraid? What if I pray and the person remains blind or remains lame? You are not the one who put that person in that condition. So don't be afraid. God is asking us to really step out in boldness and to do that. And, and, and last Sunday, I was, I was encouraged by something that uh, my sister Evelina did. Last Sunday, if you remember, our brother William asked for people who wanted to be prayed for to go at the back. So the leaders were at the back to come and be prayed for. And as we, are, we were there as leaders waiting for people to come, I saw Evelina, she stood up and she went to other people, to other friends, and she started praying with them. Nobody asked her to do that. I, I, I cannot recall William say, hey, Evelina, you have to go pray for these people, right? He didn't say that. But she boldly stood up and she went to a friend to pray with her. And this was really encouraging for me because I, I really pray that me as well, I will have this boldness. And we as a church doing worship, we will really stand up with boldness and go to our brother and sister and say, hey, you know what? I was just there praying and God gave me this verse for you. Oh, I, I just want to pray together with you. Is there anything we can pray together? So that we can be, as a church, people who are really bold enough to express the gift of the Holy Spirit. And of course, it doesn't mean that we have to fake it or we have to force it, but I think sometimes we contend ourselves too much. Sometimes we don't dare to, to go and say, listen, I was just praying and I had this picture. I don't know what it means, but I just want to share this with you. And I think God wants us to, to be people who really um, uh, put our faith into action, people who are really bold enough to say, listen, I, I just want to pray with you. Can I pray with you? Is there anything I can do? Because what we practice here, we can also practice it outside. And I really pray, and I think this is something that we as leaders, we also want to see more and more, is the boldness from the Holy Spirit to really let the gift of, of God in you be served for the, the purpose of the kingdom of God. So, what about us today? The good news is that the Holy Spirit is still available. Right? Holy Spirit is still there. And he's, he's still asking us to ask. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, 7, Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened. If we do not ask more boldness, then we will not receive it. And God is, 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 is willing to fill us with boldness to go. I want to share two uh, short personal testimonies before I give you like a discussion point and we can close. The first one, uh, first testimony is, uh, is, has to do with a, an organization called Bowlers in God. Bowlers in God is uh, a Christian organization for professional footballers. So many years ago, a friend of mine um, wanted to, to, to gather different Christian footballers together to pray and to share their faith because there was no platform uh, created. So a few years ago, a few friends of mine, there were only five of them, they created this uh, platform. And today it is one of the fastest growing Christian community among footballers. It's, it, they have it in Belgium, in the Netherlands, in England, everywhere. And uh, every month they, they make like a Zoom call and they invite people to preach, to share a message. So they, they had invited me to share a few months ago. So I prepared a short message. Uh, and then when I logged into Zoom, I saw all these players connected. And, and I could recognize many of them who play in big clubs, you know, Arsenal, uh, Chelsea, in AC Milan, all those big clubs. And, and I was a little bit intimidated. I was afraid, okay, because I was not prepared enough. You know, I, I thought, oh, wait a minute, I don't have a PowerPoint. And for some of you who know me, you know how I love PowerPoint, right? I had no PowerPoint. It was just a short message. And I was thinking, oh my God, 
look at these people. And then I could really feel inside of me the Holy Spirit saying, what are you doing? Why are you intimidated? These people are just men. You know, you don't have to be afraid. Just step out in boldness, share what I'm asking you to share. And that's it. So I just share this very short message with really Jesus-centered. Uh, I, I talked about how Jesus was thankful in every situation and, and also to encourage them to just uh, have the same mindset as Jesus, to be thankful when they, they praise you in your team, to be thankful when they put you on the bench, when you play, etc., etc. So at the end of it, we, I, I asked them to, to share, and the result was really amazing. M many of these players were almost crying, saying, this is really my life, because I realized that my, my, my Christian life was not like Jesus. I was always complaining. I was always uh, insulting my, my coaches because they, they put me on the bench, and now I realize that this is not honoring Jesus at all. And then we prayed at the end of it, and one of them decided to really dedicate himself to Jesus. And God made, open a door for him. Now he's been called back to the national team of Belgium. And for me, it was just a, an encouragement to, say, to see that whenever you step out in boldness, even when you are not prepared, even when, yes, there are those big names, the, bigger, the biggest name is Jesus, right? So you just have to go there and speak about, about Jesus and let the Holy Spirit do his work. So that was the first testimony. The second one is about my marriage. Um, most of you know, I'm married with Emma for a few years. We have now a beautiful daughter, Joanna. Uh, having a child is tough on marriage. Yeah, uh, I'm sharing, I'm being honest. And uh, you know, it's a lot of uh, energy, frustrations, and lately we, we had like a frustration on a particular topic, and yes, Christian couples also have this frustration. Some of you are amazed. Um, <laughs> but yes, it, it happens. So, you know, we have these frustrations and we say these things to one another, we, we hurt one another. And then I went uh, to prayer and I said, God, please talk to my wife and ask her to come and ask forgiveness, you know, because she hurt me. So sometimes when, that's why, how we feel. I was feeling like, God, I'm the victim. And then I could really feel God telling me, no, you have to go and ask forgiveness to her. And then, she, and, and then this is how it's going to restore your relationship. And and I was thinking, God, I am the victim. Come on, you have to talk to her. And then God said, listen, you want to demonstrate the kingdom of God? Well, the kingdom of God is also about forgiving you, those who have offended you. You go and you ask forgiveness. You humble yourself. Because we think, oh, I'm the one who's being hurt. And we, we don't realize that we also hurt the other person. But I, I say, okay, God, I'm going to go. But you know, sometimes when you have to go to someone and say, I'm sorry, that I am sorry is really, it really takes you energy to say it, right? So I say, God, okay, give me the boldness to go. And so I just went and I said, honey, listen, I'm sorry. Whatever I told you, I'm sorry. Because the most important is we want to honor God in our marriage. We want to demonstrate the kingdom of God also with our marriage. We want people, when they look at our marriage, to, they see two people who are ordinary men and women, but who love Jesus and were trying to oh, forgive one another. And once I said, I'm sorry, she was also saying, yeah, I'm also sorry, honey. I'm thinking, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, it requires from, from one person at least to go boldly and say, listen, I am sorry. You know? and, and yeah, so this, is, this was just encouraging to me. And I really pray that I will continue to put that into practice. Because sometimes, naturally, I am not bold enough in some areas. So I really need the Holy Spirit to help me in that. All right. Now I'm going to ask you to, uh, to form small groups of, I don't know, let's say three, four people. And um, just discuss this, this question. Share a situation in your life where you really had to step out in boldness to do or say something. Um, how did you feel before, after? Just share quickly if you want to pray in your group because one member of the group says, well, I'm not bold at all. Take some time to pray. Um, we are going to take, I don't know, it's almost one, it's going to take 10 minutes. Yeah, we're going to take 10 minutes and then uh, I'm going to come when it's time to just close us in prayer. All right, so take some time from groups of four. God, thank you so much that you um, love us and you give us your Holy Spirit so that we can be Jesus to the world and thank you that you equip us with the Holy Spirit boldness and uh, 
yeah, thank you that you continue to do that on a daily basis. I know that we, it's not always easy, but uh, thank you for what you are doing in our lives. And we pray that you give us also obedience when you send us out. Um, yeah, and as we go, Lord, I pray that we will go with the love of uh, our Heavenly Father. We will go with the fellowship also with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And yeah, and we will go and tell the people about you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.